the use of torture can be can be seen as a form of punishment for breaking the norms and or our laws but it can also be a method of extracting information especially from suspected dissidents uh, petty criminals and the likes no? or it can be a form of and this is uh, really what is happening in our country most of the time, a form of political uh, repression to inflict institutional harm or so fear and terror against political dissidents and insurgents. Well, of course, our uh, situation is influenced by our experience, influenced by uh, a 500-year colonial uh, power no? from, from Spain, to, uh, to the U.S., to uh, the Japanese. And uh, these forms of torture along, uh, all, 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 in all these years, uh, during the time of the colonial powers, by our colonial rulers, uh, especially during the time of the Americans, have stayed and are even improved by the present uh, government, no? especially used by our uh, security forces. Although at present there is already, we already enacted an anti-torture law, but sadly it did not deter the law enforcer from using torture against their victims. While many organizations have, and sectors have already abhorred and abandoned the use of torture, our military, our police, continue to practice inhuman form of punishment and initiation even within their own ranks. Uh, unfortunately, the impunity in the use of torture remains, and even it, uh, it worsened, notwithstanding the provision of our Anti-Torture Act of 2009. <clears throat> Although we already received the so-called nominal independence from our colonial power masters, uh, the legacy of torture in the Philippines that our colonial masters have introduced did not cease. In fact, as I've said earlier, the military and police establishments continued the use of torture to instill fear and maintain order in favor of the status quo. Uh, torture has been widely used, especially during the 20-year dictatorship of Marcos. It has become the norm during that time. Yet when President Marcos uh, declared martial law, uh, the torture has been the mostly utilized method of suppression by the military. Thousands of activists, innocent civilians, suspected of being sympathizers of the communists or sympathizers of the Muslim rebels, and other persons were arrested, detained, and subsequently tortured by the state security agents. Water cure, electro uh, electrocution, and other severe physical, mental, and emotional torture were used by the military and police agents against the opposition and activists. Again, unfortunately, the overthrow of the Marcos dictatorship through the so-called people power uh, did not eradicate the use of torture. The ascendancy of the Aquino, Corey Aquino regime uh, administration did not also stop the use of torture by the military, but it even actu actually escal escalated the use of torture. Up to the present, we are now on our second Aquino administration. The son of the former president is now our president. Again, torture is still uh, much a part of our uh, daily lives. I already mentioned that in 2009, we enacted, our Congress enacted a, an anti-torture act. But before the enactment of this law, uh, the Philippines has several statutory provisions already that implicitly prohibit the use of torture. Unfortunately, these statutory provisions did not provide for any penalty, penalty at all. Uh, the first, for example, our Fil first Philippine Constitution, it contained provisions against, uh, against uh, human rights violations, but there was no provision as to penalty. Then we have another constitution, the 1935 Constitution. It prohibits cruel punishment. Yet again, there was no uh, penalty for that. Then in 1987, after Marcos was ousted, uh, the, our present constitution explicitly mentioned that torture, among with other unusual punishment, is already prohibited. Yet, uh, 
our constitution stopped there. It says that it's up to Congress how to define torture and how it will define uh, the penalty that will be meted on violators. So from 1987, just like, just like any non-self-enacting uh, uh, provisions of our constitution, we waited for so long. It took us 22 years from 1987 up to 2009 before a, an anti-torture act was finally uh, enacted into law. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll cite some of the uh, 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 noble, even revolutionary, uh, quote-unquote, provisions or features of this anti-torture law. One of the most significant features of this law is uh, how it defines the scope or definition of torture in Section 3, uh, although mostly this was taken from the uh, uh, International Convention Against Torture. It, it defines torture as an act by which severe pain or suffering, whether physical or mental, is intentionally inflicted on a person for such purposes as obtaining from or a third person information uh, or a confession, etc., etc. It also mentioned other cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment of punishment that refers to a deliberate, aggravated treatment of punishment not enumerated under Section 4 of this Act, inflicted by a person in authority or agent of a person in authority against a person under his custody, which attains a level of severity causing suffering, gross humiliation, or debasement to the latter. The, to us, the definition of this, how, what is torture in this Act, uh, expands the, con the concept of what we call pharmacological uh, torture into a culpable criminal act. Another significant uh, feature of this law is by uh, treating torture as a separate and inde independent crime from the other acts that it committed. No? For example, if it, the, uh, the act of torture results to physical injuries, then it cannot be absorbed into the crime of physical injury. Torture is a separate crime that can still be filed by the victim. Another uh, <clears throat> uh, feature, no? we uh, put in place that command responsibility is also uh, a uh, uh, part of this law. Now, it penalizes... Because there is a provision on command responsibility, it penalizes not only those who committed or participated in the act of torture, but even the law enforcement officials and any other public official or employee whose negligence has have led to the commission of torture by their subordinates or other persons within their area of responsibility. There is also the provision that states those who committed the act of torture will be excluded from special amnesty laws that grants uh, amnesty you know, to any uh, 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 felon who commits a, a crime. You know? So the law does not exempt the torturers from any, the law now does, does not exempt the torturers from any amnesty or sanctions. And finally, uh, the Anti-Torture Act of uh, 2009, of course, uh, also provides that uh, the victim has the right to medical attention or medical examination before and after every uh, interrogation. So uh, it appears really that uh, this is a good law, no? uh, that it, may, uh, it will uh, uh, deter or prevent the commission of torture among, especially committed by security forces, the army and the police. No? And sadly, however, uh, this law remains to be a piece of paper that has yet to be implemented strictly. In spite of the enactment of the uh, 2009 anti-torture law with its uh, very revolutionary features, torture is still widely undertaken by military and police establishments. It must be noted that uh, the perpetrators of torture are the same as those who are tasked to prevent it. Historically, the law enforcers are the ones who inflict greater harm and suffering to the people by torturing them to instill fear. 
of late, one of the significant examples that I can cite is the case of, case of one Role Panesa. He's an ordinary security, security guard, uh, which was falsely accused to be a certain Benjamin Mendoza, a top-ranking official of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Uh, he was arrested, badly beaten, tortured, and he was forced to admit that indeed he is a ranking official of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Despite the, <clears throat> but the only catch there is that uh, the military is looking for a 68-year-old uh, official of the, the Communist Party of the Philippines. When we presented uh, before the court the birth certificate of uh, this Roli Panesa, we we, we uh, showed that this guy is just a 48-year-old, you know? and uh, he, there were witnesses who says who said that he is just an ordinary lowly uh, security guard. But the, despite these obvious differences in the description of these two persons, the military stuck to its claim and even inflicted severe physical and mental torture to Panessa. Uh, to make what matter worse, after we filed the case using this anti-torture act, the, our Department of Justice absolved senior military and police officials from the torture case that he filed and indicted only the low-ranking of officers involved in the torture of Panessa, uh, despite the fact that there is a clear provision in the anti 2009 Anti-Torture Act that command responsibility uh, uh, is in place. To top it all, the armed forces of the Philippines even gave um, 5.6 million reward to the informant who allegedly gave them information on the capture of this person. So the, the reward system uh, in the Philippines is seen uh, to us, this is like an organized racketeering scheme by the military and the police. Uh, in 2012, the Department of National Defense and the Department of Interior issued a joint memorandum listing 235 names, which they claim are ranking officials of the Communist Party of the Philippines. There is another list which also listed uh, several hundred names, which they also claim, the police and the military claim, are uh, leaders of uh, the Moro uh, rebels and even by uh, so-called terrorist group like the Abu Sayyaf. And all these uh, names uh, in that list have a varying degree amount of reward. You know? So uh, it appears that these names or these uh, lists are being used by the military by the police, in arresting falsely uh, innocent civilians and taking the rewards and give, uh, granting the rewards to supposed informants and for these informants to take the rewards. But uh, we suspect that uh, ranking officials of the military and the police are behind these so-called informants no? and they have a cut in these so-called uh, rewards. So even though this uh, scheme has already been exposed as a racketeering scheme, the military and the police authorities continued with this activity. In fact, just recently, two elderly uh, fellow were again arrested and accused be as top officials of the Communist Party of the Philippines. And of late, there's also another scandalous news that racked the state security forces when it was exposed that our police in one province is using this wheel of torture, you know? uh, just like wheel of fortune, you know? uh, whereby a wheel of torture uh, consists of a game that points to a punishment written in a rotating circular board. So there's a wheel there. Uh, the victim is here. He will be asked to, uh, uh, to spin the wheel. No, if the wheel is, uh, if the spin stops, for example, in the portion that says water boarding, then he has to suffer water boarding. No? So uh, the game is uh, degrading in itself, apart from the punishment indicated in the torture wheel. No? Uh, what I learned is there is an there was an investigation, but until now uh, there was no 
case filed against these police officers that practice this kind of torture. So, um, to us, as uh, our history, uh, as, a, uh, as a colony, uh, it shows that really torture has, has a, uh, or still is, a weapon that is being used by those who are in power. Uh, and uh, really, because it is uh, those who are in power, the authorities, that have the capability to uh, really commit inhuman, cruel, and degrading punishment to the people, and not the other way around. The state of impunity in our country, uh, in the use of torture by state security forces, cannot occur without the tacit approval or backing by government officials. The military and police institutions cannot implement torture or the use of it if the government have the political will to stop it. It's not enough that you have to pass a law, but you have to really implement the law. Thus, it is inherent upon governments, you know, for that matter, uh, I suppose. Government run by uh, the elite who wanted to protect their hold into power to allow the use of torture by its security uh, forces just to maintain the status quo. To prevent dissent and to prevent uh, people from rising, the ruling elite in our country will allow the military to use torture and other forms of punishment in order to instill fear, institutional fear among our people. Thus, while the passage of the Anti-Torture Act of 2009 has been uh, welcomed, it has been commented on by international human rights groups, the implementation and strong determination of the government to curb human rights violations in the form of torture remains to be seen. For example, uh, the, the current uh, administration under uh, President Aquino, uh, it campaigned on a platform of human rights, it campaigned on a, on a platform of anti-graft uh, uh, and corruption in 2010, but when it was already in power, sadly, uh, during his inaugural address, we hardly hear any word or statement about human rights at all, up to now. So the need for a torture law in the Philippines really has already been provided, unfortunately, the need to implement it and punish that the culprits comes now to the fore. This only shows that the enactment of a law is not enough to solve the problems of a society. It is the action and determination to curb these social ills, these social problems, or this uh, problem and criminality, especially those committed by men in uniform, state forces, that is the next step needed to be uh, undertaken. And uh, I, 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 uh, uh, to end, it, to, to end I, I have to rephrase the statement of our colleague from uh, Bangladesh that, in fact, uh, in the final analysis, it will be our people, really, who will uh, uh, exact, you know, who will Im implement the change that uh, is needed in our country. No, it's not the politicians, though, because the politicians... Uh, especially in an elite-dominated society like the Philippines, will only represent the interests of the elite in the main. So, for, for example, like our party, we are a minority in the 290-member uh, House of Representatives. We can only say so much, we can only do so much, but in the final analysis, it's a game, it's a number of games in that uh, parliament. So, uh, <coughs> What can we do? You know, after presenting these uh, uh, issues in the parliament, the best thing that we can do is bring these issues back to the people and for the people to decide what to do next. You know? uh, because to us, still, the best uh, parliament is still in the parliament of the streets. Thank you.